often wondered what happens when talented MBA students apply for the same job roles as they're thinking of coming out of school. Well, at the School of Management of Yale, that isn't a question because they all want each other to succeed. Uh, it's a school with a vibrant and incredibly supportive community, obviously one of the top business schools in the world. And as the Dean describes it, looks at both sides of the amber sand when you think about business and society. Uh, and it's a pleasure uh, to welcome Bruce Delmonico. Bruce, uh, you'll remember from other Centre Court events, he's the Assistant Dean uh, for Admissions at Yale SOM. He's also a GMAC board member and so has a great understanding of the graduate management education landscape. Uh, and joining us, uh, Maya Berkman. Maya is in the class of 2023, which means that graduation is coming up soon. She studied government at Wesleyan uh, and included study abroad in Spain. Uh, had worked on all sorts of strategic communications initiatives uh, on the West Coast, Launch Squad, and then strategic partnerships with Countable. Uh, already a focus on social impact and brand purpose. We'll see where that takes her next after an exciting internship that she did uh, this summer at Amazon. Both of you, great to have you with us. And Bruce, um, you will do much more justice to that mission uh, of the school. So perhaps we can start with a general introduction to, to Yale SOM, values, reputation. I'll hand over to you. Sure, sure. Uh, happy, uh, happy to to. to pick up the reins and, and Matt, thank you so much for, for having us. It's always a thrill to, to be part of Center Court and to, to get a chance to chat with you. Um, and, and you're right, so you talked about, uh, I think, you know, as, as well as I could, uh, sort of the, the mission of the school and kind of the, the, uh, the, the, the values and kind of the mindset of the students, the supportive nature, the cooperative nature. You know, Yale SOM, um, what, the founding mission is to educate leaders for business and society. That ampersand that you mentioned is very much core to the, to the, the founding of, of the school decades ago. And then very much um, when the school was founded, leadership at Yale, we're thinking, what, you know, what we, should we have a business school at Yale? What would it look like? We should, it shouldn't just be the same as every other business school. It needs to be distinctively Yale. And so that, that multi-sector approach, uh, that interdisciplinary approach, it very much is central to the, to the sort of the DNA of the school and thinking about not just um, sort of the private, but the nonprofit and public sectors and how the se sectors interrelate and interact uh, is really, is really central, both to the, again, to the founding and also to, to how, how our students are educated now. Um, I think that does inform the values of the school. Again, it's it's a very supportive, very cooperative place. There is the belief that, uh, you know, for for one person to succeed, someone else uh, doesn't doesn't have to fail. It's not a zero sum game, but everybody can we can everyone can lift each other up. And and I and that's one of the things that I frankly attracted me to the school almost two decades ago, uh, and that's why I'm still still at Yale SOM and um, why I still, still very much sort of cherish the opportunity to to be at the school. And I think. Um, you, you talk about your reputation. I think you know. I can't speak to how the school is viewed externally, but I, I can speak to what what you know what we're about, what we what we what we value, what we think about. Um, and I, the one thing we, I'm sure we'll talk about lots of other aspects of the experience. But one thing that I think is is important to think about is the fact that when you come to Yale, so you very much come to Yale, and there are ways in which that has meaningful uh, impact on the student experience, on the alumni experience, on on your education, on on your network, on all aspects of uh, of your time, both here and and beyond. And so I think that's an important part of the experience. So I'll, I'll stop there. But that's a little bit about sort of the mission and uh, of the school, and, and kind of a little bit about the values of of how we experience. Uh, and, and prepare our students to 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 have impact uh, after they graduate. Well, it's only Tom Brady that's hanging up his boots, Bruce, and, and we hope that you know the, the the near twenty years that you spent at the school uh, continue. Because my comment about wanting everybody to succeed, I think, has been at the heart of your work in in admissions with with fantastic colleagues. Just to return to. Uh, perhaps that relationship between the School of Management and the broader university. I, I imagine yeah. the trustees in the mid 1970s they probably had a lot longer hair than 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 we do uh, in the 2020s. Um, but just how that then provides so much interaction. I mean, you've got this fabulous business school campus right in the heart of the university. Right. But that must provide so many additional options and interactions for all of the business school students. No, I, I think that's right. And obviously, uh, Mike could speak to this much more immediately and much more much more knowledgeably than I can, having sort of being in the experience right now. But I, I think that's right. I think you know the the way that our 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 MBA program is structured. Obviously, it's a two year full time MBA program. Um, the first year is 
predominantly the core curriculum. So everybody's taking the same same courses and in the same order. And actually that we have a cohort system. So you're in the classes with the same cohort um, throughout that, that core experience. We want everyone to get that grounding and sort of the management. And it, it actually is a unique experience actually I can talk about that. But then when you start to take electives in the spring of the first year and then throughout your entire second year, you can take them anywhere at the university. And I think that's a real differentiator. I know some schools you can take a, a handful here or there. There are limits, but there are no limits. Um, you can you uh, you can take all of your electives if you want outside of, of, of the school of management at the, the law school, the environment school, the school of public health, the Jackson School of International Affairs, and elsewhere, uh, even Yale College, um, and they count towards your graduation. So I think that's that's an important piece. That's one piece of of uh, of, of the experience, and I think it does kind of support. These, this, the ampersand, as you mentioned, the, the business and society, that uh, it's an intersectionality. We, we really want our students to think broadly about what they're doing, the kind of impact they can have. And, 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 and I think that's, that's part of the curriculum, again, even in the core, the, our integrated curriculum really, really tries to educate our students to have that broad mindset and to think across disciplines and, and across industries. And I think that does play out in their careers uh, and in the, the value that they add, I know, you know, when we talk to consulting for, firms, for example, you know, they say we want Yale SOMs, you know, graduates on our teams because they provide that big picture perspective that's so valuable. And I think that's how we educate in the core and then beyond with the electives, the ability to, to learn across the university, not just the school of management, the number of joint degree students we have with the law school, the med school, school of public health and, and, and the environment school and others. Uh, I think that that speaks to even drama architecture elsewhere. I think that speaks to kind of the mindset of the school and that kind of that 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 um, sort of interdisciplinary approach. Uh, and you've mentioned in the, the heart of, of Yale, we are, you know, we're on the north end of campus, but the, the the life of the university is very, very integrated as well. The school works very hard. The university works very hard to make sure that uh, that that at, all aspects of the university are very it's very porous. It's very uh, uh, it's very accessible you know, across graduate schools, even with the undergraduate, and even more generally. You know, we are we're located in New Haven, Connecticut, which I think is a lovely kind of mid-sized New England town. But we're maybe an hour and a half, two hours from New York, maybe two two and a half hours from from Boston, four or five hours from from DC in the in the new the northeast corridor of the U.S. So it's very accessible, not just to Yale, but also to kind of the the, the centers of of business and life in the northeast U.S which I think is important too. Uh, Maya, perhaps one of the best parts of Bruce's job is when he puts his signature on a letter addressed to you to say that he's delighted to welcome you uh, in, in what would have been the fall of 2021 to join this community at uh, Yale. So that, that must be a, a, a wonderful moment for both of you. So uh, take us back. Uh, you know, you're enjoying this very successful career on the West Coast. Um, just where you started to think about business school and then how you organized your thoughts, you know, choosing the right program. What, what were your considerations and the factors that then led you to choose Yale SOM? Yes, I, you know, for me, the path to business school was extremely circu circuitous. I, it, it frankly wasn't really on my radar for much of the time, certainly in through undergrad as I was studying government and completing internships in the political space and in DC, um, and even out in, in San Francisco and Silicon Valley, I, I just didn't expect my path to lead to an MBA. Um, but what I what I found is I was working at, at Countable, which was an early stage civic tech startup. So we were working really at this intersection of the public and private spheres. We were working with campaigns and advocacy organizations and increasingly in the corporate responsibility public affairs space. And what I found is that I was missing some of the some of the vocabulary I needed to be extremely effective at that intersection. I saw so much power, so much potential for social impact when you bring the public and private spheres together in, in different capacities, in different programs. But I, I didn't feel like I understood or knew how to effectively speak to all of the stakeholders um, that one needs to engage with to be to be successful there. So that's when an MBA Kind of crept into my mind and I, I began exploring, but it was really through that lens. And Yale SOM understandably bubbles to the top of, of that list when you're looking for an intersection of the public and private or business and society. 
um, certainly because of the curriculum and the access to other programs outside of the business school specifically, as Bruce was mentioning, um, was a, a major part of my, my calculus, but also because of the community it attracts and the students who are here and what they go on to do afterwards. So that's how I began thinking about business school. I had so many conversations in those couple of years leading up to it to make sure that it was the right step for me and the right journey for me. And I, I don't think I could have landed at a better program for, for my goals. So, so there you are, like a, a kid in the candy store with you know, the, the School of Management within this extraordinary university and all of these new classmates. Um, what is that moment like? given the extraordinary number of opportunities that you can then pursue, did you have to sort of rein yourself in and say, well, I need to focus a little, I'd like to try this, I want to look at this. How, how do you think about organizing your time? Oh gosh, I fear I haven't reined myself in quite quite enough. It's been a busy past two years. Um, you know, I, I certainly felt like a kid in the candy store. There were so many clubs and communities and programs and opportunities to really sink your teeth into different aspects and different angles of, of social impact. Um, I, I, in my first year, spent a lot of time exploring. I showed up at events. I worked with students across different types of programs, bringing speakers to campus. And, and over time, you start to figure out where, where to focus, where you can have the most impact yourself, where you want to take leadership positions. So I've become a leader in our Net Impact Club, which is the uh, social impact umbrella organization um, at SOM. Uh, I'm also very involved in our business and politics club as a co-leader there, uh, quite literally the intersection of, of government and business. Um, and uh, have also explored research opportunities and working with some of the amazing faculty that's here um, and, and exploring that intersection. So it, this year in particular, working with the Chief Executive Leadership Institute, um, Professor Jeffrey Sonnenfeld. Um, I'm a TA for his course, but I've also been involved in work around uh, his CEO summit. And we brought Ukrainian President Zelensky to campus or to a, a live Q and A with students on campus, um, it's it's been an incredible opportunity to really dabble, um, but to do so with focus towards you know the the ultimate direction I'm running in, which is working at that intersection. And perhaps at both the micro and the macro level, because you bring your background and experience, but Yale puts so much emphasis on diversity uh, inclusion. Uh, and therefore, you know, you're in these uh, classes or individual study sessions with profiles very different from yours. And at the same time, this extraordinary convening power that you describe of the CEO summit or having the president of Ukraine, you know, during a conflict who takes the time to address the students at the school. What, what do you then draw upon from all of those individual experiences and potential role models? Yes, you know, working with, I think it is really the inspiration you get from the folks around you. One thing that immediately comes to mind with this question is the learning team. Um, Bruce mentioned our first year when we're in the core curriculum, we're in cohorts. Those are about 70 or so students. Um, but as you, within the cohort, most of your assignments are completed with a small group of about seven or eight students, and even smaller within that, about three or four. And certainly my group, and I know this holds true for many of my peers here, an incredibly diverse set of professional backgrounds, personal backgrounds, and the the opportunity to really draw on that collective expertise um, when you are completing any assignment, but also when you're recruiting for your MBA internship and when you're trying to bring a speaker to campus and trying to reach different people in different industries. I found that this collective knowledge and the collective experience and real diversity of experience that exists within the SOM the SOM orbit um, is is shared. There is, you know, this, this came up at the start of the call. It doesn't feel like a sense of competition. No one has to fail for someone else to succeed. Everyone is incredibly generous with their their networks, their ideas, their expertise, and I think that has really informed for me both academically and the extracurricular experience here, um, and has has made it an incredibly rich experience overall. Bruce, um, with 18 years of admissions experience at the school, you, you attract you know, very smart, very talented individuals. 
but people that care. But, you know, Maya uses the word generosity. Is that something that you're able to identify as, as people reach out to the school? Yeah, I think the, the more I've done this, the sort of the, the, the less I believe I have any sort of special talent at selecting individuals. There's so much that goes into it. And I think it, it really is very much a matching process. So we're selecting the people we think are we think would be good here at SOM based on sort of the criteria we, we have and bring bring excellent people with sort of who we feel align with with the mission. But very much, you know, so sort of, sort of my and others have to think about whether, you know, we're the right place for them. And it's a very, a very much a two way street. So, um, you know, in the selection process, we try not to be, you know, I don't feel like we can necessarily sort of see deep into everybody's souls the way that, you know, you might think. But we you know we do the best we can um, to bring really smart, very talented, very sort of impact oriented people here to SOM. And then, let, and then try and help educate them about our mission, our values, what we're about. And hopefully there's a match and there's an alignment. And if there is, then we're lucky enough to have the welcome them here to Yale. And I think that's very much how the process goes. So I think, it's, it, as I said, it's very much a two-way street. It's not just about us admitting, but it's about students, you know, sort of seeing that, that, that match as well. Right. Now, the, there will be those in college who will take advantage of uh, Yale Silver Scholars. And you know, they right. know that they have business school in mind. There's someone like Maya, you know, pursuing a career on the West Coast. And it wasn't immediate to her, but then, you know, really started to think about what that would bring to uh, uh, to, to what she was looking to achieve, the positive impact that she would then have. So what advice do you have for prospects who are perhaps uncertain about their career aspirations and the timing, you know, very often, perhaps particularly in the current economy? Yeah, no, and I certainly in the moment, the current moment we're in, I think the the timing is very much. There's a lot of uncertainty. Uh, I mean, it's interesting, you know, we, you know, when we're as we're having this this conversation, I know we've gotten the, in the wake of uh, sort of a number of significant sort of layoffs, but at the same time, you know, the half a million jobs being added in in the last month in the U.S. So it's a lot of uncertainty, a lot of fluctuations. You know, I think. I think for, for, you know, for you mentioned silver scholars for, for college seniors who are entering, you know, thinking about entering the labor market or, or getting more education. And even for people who are kind of early in, in their career or even at various points in their career, you know, thinking about the MBAs, it's a big investment. It's a big decision. Um, and I think, you know, one thing I like to say is, you know, it's the, the, the value of the MBA is so significant and sort of the, the, the doors it opens is so, are, 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 are so incredible. And I, point to myself, you know, I have a, I have a law background, I have a law degree, I practice for a number of years. And I, I think, uh, uh, I think, you know, there's a, the common wisdom that, you know, if you're kind of young and smart and you want to sort of have impact and do something, you get a law degree and then you have a lot of doors open to you. And I, to some degree that's true, but I actually think the MBA is really, it gives, it has a lot more optionalities, a lot more, it really opens that many more doors. And I think it's, it's really, if you're kind of young and smart and you think you you have a sense of what you want to do, but don't have it quite figured out. Obviously, you don't want to kind of throw up your hands and say, I have no idea. But if you if you have a sort of direction, but are still figuring things out, um, certainly at Yale, you know, we 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 don't feel like you have to have sort of sort of chapter and verse for the next 30 years figured out. Uh, so if you're explore, still exploring, I think it it's, can be a good option. And I think especially now. Um, you know, with with a lot of the the uncertainty in the in the the job market, there might be some people who are thinking, okay, maybe I step away for a, a, a couple of years, kind of retool, get a you know, sort of, uh, you know, kind of level up a little bit. As as Maya said, that she had sort of maybe not she had the instincts, but maybe not the sort of the the framework uh, to be able to have the kind of impact she wanted. So you can kind of step back, get get those tools, get those skills, and then and then sort of re-enter in a way that is uh, will allow you to to kind of elevate what you're doing and elevate your your potential and i think the the mba is a great place to do that if for for any range of options you might want to want to explore and i think that's part of the value it's so flexible it's so uh, it allows you to do so many different things and really switch among the things you're doing and i think that's uh, that makes it a really really powerful tool yeah and, and your emphasis on options so center court we've welcomed your colleagues from career services i wish i'd met them 30 years ago that they're so wise uh, and and perhaps also the reminder of it's not just the first job. I mean, th th this this program is is going to provide any number of opportunities and a return in in for the rest of your career, right, Bruce? No, I think that's right. It's not about the the as you say exactly. It's not about that the first job. It's not not about the first job. Obviously, that's an important first step. But but you know you will have multiple career uh, 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 transitions in throughout your your professional life, and it's really about the long term. And I think. 
we could go, I mean, not that we would necessarily go into more detail, but I think actually our integrated curriculum is meant more for the long term and not just that first job after graduation. It sort of the, the farther you went in your career, in your career, I think the more value it adds. Um, but you want to think about sort of that lifetime uh, of of sort of career options, and the MBA does provide uh, that. And you mentioned our career services team, who are fantastic, and actually. You can you can access them throughout your career. It's not just after after you leave after you graduate. This is a more specific thing, but after you graduate, it's not as though your relationship with the school and with with our career services team ends. You continue to work with them throughout your entire professional life, which I think is a nice thing. Now, Maya, of course, you're going through that process, and they prepared you for your interviews. You're going to nail them, I'm, I'm sure. Uh, lots of options uh, that are open to you. You've done this uh, internship at Amazon during the summer. That experience that that had brought. But these two years have gone by so fast, and here we are approaching the summer. As as you think back uh, of of the last two years, um, something that was you know just uniquely memorable, perhaps quite unexpected. What what do you see as two or three of of the real hallmark, hallmarks of the experience that you've had with the MBA at Yale? There are so many. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I mentioned earlier. I, I think they they draw on different parts. There are academic hallmarks. There are extracurricular hallmarks, social hallmarks. Um, I've had the opportunity here to participate in some really exciting international experiences. Um, something that hasn't come up yet on this call, but also a a priority at SOM and taking a really global view to to stakeholders and to um, what it what it looks like to be an impactful business in in the world, not just in this country. Um, so I, I was able to participate in the IE, our international experience to Peru, which is a, a class. And then you travel as a, as a class and meet with business leaders and um, politicians and a number of different folks um, in country. I participated in that last year um, and less, less formally, but attended an India trek this past winter break organized by members of uh, of my class and and friends um, attending a friend's wedding in India, but really building those personal connections um, and, and seeing where folks grew up and learning from them on the grounds has definitely been been one hallmark. Um, in the academic sphere, another one has been for me, the, the classes I've taken outside of the business school and the students who attended SOM classes who come from other programs. Mm -hmm. I'm currently in a class at the law school about public policy and strategy of the media and tech industries right up my alley and really interesting to approach it from more of a legal framework. Um, and in those conversations, I took a class on Russian disinformation and, um, and intelligence and the internet at the Jackson Institute and our, our public policy program here. Um, so that's been been another hallmark and getting to really fill out the contours of my academic experience um, across the university. Right. I think curiosity might also be in that list of uh, characteristics that Bruce's team <laughs> love to uh, identify. With with all of that, you know, you, you talk about geopolitics and, and disinformation, just the range of courses that you can take at the personal level. You know, it's it's a real journey. Do you now look at yourself in terms of perhaps the, the self-confidence, some of those less tangible things, and you say, ah, I, I'm, you know, I'm a very different person than I was two years ago? Absolutely. I think the the skills we learn here and the frameworks we take away are important, they're tangible, but it it really serves to inform who you are as a leader when you walk into a room and when you walk into a meeting. And I, I feel a newfound confidence in speaking with folks from different industries um, who have very different backgrounds to me, who may be quite a bit more senior than I am in, a, in an organization, um, but but claiming my own seat at the table and drawing on the conversations I've had here, the late, the cases I've looked at here, the lessons I've learned here to, to really show up and be very present in those, in those conversations um, and, and drive the agenda forward that I, I think is necessary in, in those meetings. So it's, it's certainly had intangible impact as well. Yeah, well, your your enthusiasm is palpable. I mean, and contagious too. So, uh, you know, with our viewers who are in a situation that you were in, you know, two, three years ago, and thinking about business school where it might fit, your advice to someone, uh, in, both in in what it will bring to them, uh, and of course, uh, Yale in particular. 
Absolutely. So my, my advice is to write it down, write down your goals. I am not a journaler. I, I always found that to be a practice that was really hard to maintain. But as I was deciding whether first to attend business school and then also which program was going to be the best fit for me um, in making my ultimate decision, it came down to what I put on paper and what I really was able to articulate to myself in terms of what I what my goals were in the short term and the long term. Um, and that also served to inform my goals once I arrive. As you as you mentioned, it's it's a bit of a whirlwind. It goes by so quickly. But being able to look back to what I put on paper is why I'm here um, has certainly informed how I've navigated the rest of my experience. Um, and I, when you think about Yale SOM and any business school, the other thing I would say is talk to as many people as you can. And, you know, there, there are notable alumni from our program who are leading industries and leading firms, um, perhaps in the industries where you want to enter. But there are also folks at all stages of their career, whether it was their first job out of business school, maybe they're five years down the road, 10 years down the road. And those are incredible resources to understand how this program can help you achieve those goals because no one's no one's path looks the same to to where they've landed and i would certainly recommend investing in those conversations i think with all of the hysteria at the moment around chat gps your reminder of you know take your pen and paper and you write down those very personal goals that no artificial intelligence would ever be able to capture uh, Bruce, d- just finally, uh, Maya's mentioned this importance of reaching out, talking to um, current students, alumni, right. perhaps at different stages uh, beyond uh, the MBA experience at Yale. Um, how can they get in touch with you, with the team, the info sessions right. you organize, you're on the road? Um, what, what are the next steps to really get to know Yale SOM better? Yeah, no, there are, there are many different channels to, to be able to do that. And I think Sir Maya is exactly right. We actually um, we have on our on our website som.yale.edu. There's actually a student ambassadors page where current students are are make themselves available to speak to prospective uh, candidates. And I think that's a great resource. So hearing directly from students about their experiences, we're actually working to build an analogous alumni ambassadors page too, so so that the candidates can reach out to to alumni uh, as, as well. Because I know those are important voices. In terms of us, obviously our our, our um, sort of main email mba.admissions at yale.edu is the most obvious way just to reach out to directly, but on our website, again, som.yale.edu, we have a list of events. We're, we're hosting our campus visits uh, resume for this semester in a, in a couple of weeks, so you can come to campus, but we have lots of virtual events throughout the spring and into the summer. We will be traveling, so you can check to see, you know, in sort of starting probably in June and July, you know, if we're coming to you, we're going to be doing uh, um, some some in-person events as well. So uh, lots of ways to connect both virtually and in-person, and we, and we look forward to doing that. Well, Maya, I look forward to following your next steps. I think we've talked a lot about this ambassand on both sides, business and society, and the focus of your work, the, the positive impact that it will have. Clearly, the experience at Yale is going to contribute to that. Bruce, it's always lovely to have you at Centre Court. Thank you, both of you.